Hello and welcome to another edition of Cal Recycles Recycling and Disposal Reporting System Training and Outreach Video Tutorial Series. Today we will be demonstrating how to submit a report for a disposal facility. Permitted solid waste disposal facilities with a registration, standardized, or full permit who dispose any tonnage in the state of California must file an RDRS report on a quarterly basis. Begin by navigating your browser to the Recycling and Disposal Reporting System login page. By navigating to Cal Recycle's website, by typing in calrecycle.ca.gov into your web browser's URL bar and pressing enter. Then click on the search box, type RDRS, and click the magnifying glass or press the enter key. You should see that the first return search result is for the main recycling and disposal reporting system web page. Click on that link to proceed to the web page. This is the main RDRS webpage where you can view recent events and news items, as well as reference additional content related to RDRS reporting. For this video, we are assuming that you have already created an organization slash site with at least one disposal facility reporting entity activity and need to file a quarterly report this quarter. If you haven't done this, you'll want to go to our training page and watch a video about how to register your facility or operation. To log into RDRS, click the button that says Log into RDRS. This is the RDRS sign-in page. Type in the email address associated with the web pass you use to register your organization slash site and disposal facility reporting entity activity. Then click the next button or press the enter key. Next, verify that the password protection phrase matches the one you used when you created your web pass. If it does, then type your password and click the next button or press the enter key. Once you've logged into RDRS, you will be able to see this main select organization slash site screen where you can view all of the organizations slash sites associated with your web pass. To complete this example, we will select Cap City Landfill by clicking the arrow button on its row. This is the organization slash site summary page for the organization slash site we have selected. To create a report for the landfill reporting entity that is located on this site, we will click the quarterly reports button near the top of the left hand navigation pane. To add a report, click the add report button. This is the quarterly report search screen. And here you can view any reports that have been opened and view the status of those reports at a glance. We've already got the report we want in progress, but you can click add report to create a new report. You'll indicate which reporting entity on the site for which you're filing the report. This option is necessary because some sites have more than one reporting entity needing to report quarterly. Under Reporting Periods, select the applicable reporting period. If this, is, if this activity is exempt from reporting this quarter, select an applicable exemption reason. When you are finished, click Save.
Clicking save loads a new quarterly report for the quarter you have specified in the previous screen for the reporting entity you selected. You can verify by looking at the organization slash site information box. in which the reporting entity activity name, reporting period, and quarterly report status fields are visible for your confirmation. This is the instructions tab. Follow the instructions on the screen, and when you are finished, click on the inflows tab and begin sequentially clicking on each tab from left to right filling in all required form fields. On the inflows tab, you will report receiving materials. You will not report on tons of inbound recyclables, but you will report on inflows of solid waste, green material, potential beneficial reuse, non-green material, potential beneficial reuse, disaster debris, and designated waste. You can do this in whichever order you'd like as long as you stay on this tab, but we will begin by answering the methodology questions. Click the edit button. Now answer the question methods used to determine tons received. Check all the boxes that apply to this reporting entity. When you are finished, click save. You'll notice that the check mark, check boxes you have selected appear back in the main tab and are grayed out. To make additional modifications, you can click the edit button once again. Below this section, there are three tables in which you will place data about material received by your reporting entity. The first table will be pre-populated with data already in the system as of the opening of your report. The system will alert you about transfer processing facilities and operations who have reported sending your disposal facility some material. Taking a look here, it appears that Riverbend Transfer Station and Wood Lake Material Recovery Facility reported sending our facility various materials. You will either accept, modify, or reject the incoming tonnages. No data will be accepted into your report by default. Even if the tonnages are correct, you will still need to assign a disposition to each item in this table, accepted, rejected, or modified. If a transfer processor submitted their report after you have already opened yours, you can check by clicking the Refresh Tonnages Reported by Transfer Processors button, and the system will check to see if there are any additional records of materials sent to your facility. In this example, Riverbend Transfer Station reported sending 4,000 tons of solid waste and 1,000 tons of green material potential beneficial reuse to our landfill. Additionally, Wood Lake MRF reported sending 1,000 tons of solid waste, 100 tons of designated waste, 10,000 tons of disaster debris, and 500 tons of non-green material beneficial reuse. As I mentioned just a moment ago, we will now need to accept, modify, or reject the incoming waste and waste-derived materials reported by transfer processors as sent to the facility. We will now accept the two records from Riverbend Transfer Station. For the records from Wood Lake MRF, we'll reject the designated waste tons. Let's say they inadvertently sent it to our landfill, but it was supposed to go somewhere else. Click Reject to not accept this material inflow. 
you'll see that the disposition has changed to rejected. Let's also say that some of the non-green material potential or beneficial reuse was too contaminated and was instead accepted for landfilling. Of the 500 tons of non-green material potential beneficial reuse, only 200 was actually accepted. The rest was disposed. We'll click modify and change the record to 200, or rather select the record and then click on the edit button. Type in 200 and click save. Up. We'll also need to modify the down the disaster debris tonnage. Because some of that material was actually recovered for recycling rather than being disposed in landfill. Click modify next to the disaster debris line item and modify the tons down 10,000 to 9,000. And click save. Since we added 300 additional disposal tons, from not accepting some of the non-green beneficial reuse material for that purpose, we'll need to increase the solid waste for disposal record from Wood Lake Murph by 300 tons. Click edit and increase the value by 300 tons for a total of 1300 tons accepted from Wood Lake Murph. Click save. Now let's say we usually receive material from three transfer stations, but for whatever reason the third one didn't show up in the table above. Let's say they didn't submit a quarterly report for whatever reason. It's still our responsibility to indicate we got material from them, however. Which brings us to table number two. Material accepted from transfer processors who are not listed above. Click Add Inflow on the table to bring up the Add Inflow screen. We know the name of the transfer station whose waste we're not able to click accept on. It's Lackluster Transfer Station. So we'll start typing Lack and see if it pops right up. Confirms the contact information for the facility uh, is, is for the facility that you're intending to accept material from. Then add in the tonnage. Add 50 tons under solid waste disposal and 5.5 tons under green material for beneficial reuse. Then click save. This takes you back to the main inflows tab. You can now see the two records have been added, one for the solid waste and one for the green material. The last table, total material accepted from direct haul at your facility, includes processing residuals, is where you'd input the total aggregated direct hauled tons of the five reportable inbound material streams over the quarter. Direct haul is everything that was not brought to your facility by transfer processing facilities and operations. 
Be sure to include any processing residuals generated by on-site dependent recycling activities, such as composting facilities, sent to disposal by including those tons in the total aggregated tons of direct hauled solid waste received over the course of the quarter. For instance, if we receive 5,000 tons of MSW and our dependent composting facility produced 1,000 tons of residuals that were landfilled, I'd say I accepted 6,000 tons of solid waste for disposal. Let's say that I also got 1,250 tons of green material for beneficial reuse from direct haul. Finally, non green material for beneficial reuse must be added by material type. The non-green material beneficial reuse must be added by material type. Click Next. This is the non-green material for beneficial reuse screen within the Inflows tab. For this example, we will accept 1,000 tons of processed construction demolition waste. To filter the material type list, click the drop down arrow in the material column and type beneficial into the search bar. This will filter the list for materials approved for beneficial reuse. Select the appropriate material type, add the tons, and click save. You will see the summary update with the total tons accepted. You can add additional non-green beneficial reuse material types by clicking Add Material, and you can edit or delete each item you've added in line. We've added all our non-green material for this example. Confirm the tonnages. from direct haul transfer stations and the total tons accepted are true and accurate and then you can continue to the next tab on site disposal on the on site disposal tab you can confirm but not modify the tonnages indicated as accepted for disposal. These tonnages were accepted in the previous screen. If you need to make changes to the tonnages, go back to the previous screen and modify the inflow tons as appropriate. When you are finished reviewing the disposal tons and are satisfied that this is the correct amount disposed and beneficially I'm, I'm sorry, not uh, you will move on to the next tab, beneficial reuse. On this tab, you will indicate whether the material accepted for beneficial reuse was accepted for use as alternative daily cover, alternative intermediate cover, construction or landscaping and erosion control. There are two tables here, one for green material conforming to the definition of processed green material in Title 27, California Code of Regulations, Section 20690, and the other for all other beneficial reuse materials that do not conform to this definition. In this example, since we indicated accepting 1,000 250 tons of green material for potential beneficial, I'm sorry, 2,000, 
225 tons of green material for beneficial reuse. We will now report how the material was accepted. Click edit next to the various line items and indicate what kind of beneficial reuse they were accepted for use as. We'll click edit and assign those tonnages to alternative daily cover. You'll see that the total tons entered matches inflow tons. We have allocated all the green material beneficial reuse. On the table below for non-green material, you can see where you got the material from and the tons. We will assign all the records to ADC as well. Then we can move on to the next tab, Outflows. The Outflows tab is where you would indicate reportable material handling streams sent out of the facility. Some disposal facilities may engage in efforts to recover certain materials for recycling or composting. Other disposal facilities generate solid waste that will need to be sent to another solid waste facility. Disposal facilities taking the lead for reporting dependent recycling activities on the same site would report the tons of intermediate products produced by those recycling activities and sent to various destinations on this tab. For instance, the disposal facility has a dependent composting facility, so we would report the tons of finished compost products sold or transferred. We mentioned earlier that we subtracted 1,000 tons of disaster debris disposal because some of those tons were sent to the on-site composting facility and some of that material was recovered for recycling. Click edit and answer the methodology question about how your facility determined tons sent. For this facility, we track outflow based on certified scales and also use material specific volume to weight conversion factors. To estimate the tons of the compost anyway. Then indicate which outflow streams were sent to the disposal facility or by the disposal facility. For this training video, because we have a dependent composting activity on site, we'll select not just recycling composting, but also end users. Click submit or save to save the information. This takes you back to the main outflows page. Click. Now we will add in the tons of sent off site for recycling. Click Add Recycling Composting Outflow in the table that has just appeared as a result of having checked the checkbox in the prior screen. This takes you to the Add Outflow page. You'll need to wait a moment as it takes a while for the list of material types and facilities to load. You can begin inputting the receiving facility name as soon as the arrows have stopped spinning. For this example, we will send 500 tons of CDI concrete to Clayton County RRC. We'll begin typing Clayton into the box and the facility should pop right up.
Select the facility and confirm the contact information looks OK. Then under the box for material type, click it and type CDI concrete and it should pop right up. Click on it and then it will autofill the rest. Then enter the tons and click save or press enter to continue. This takes you to the outflow details page where if needed you can add additional material types you would like to send to the facility. You know we also send brown goods to the facility that we recovered from the disaster debris. Click add material to add multiple material types to the same destination. On this screen we will select brown goods and indicate we sent 4.03 tons. Click save or press the enter key. We will add another material type, non-ferrous scrap. Click in the add material button and then type non-ferrous scrap, mixed metals, type in 1.75 tons, and click save or press the enter key. We are done adding outflows to this facility. Click the back button. This takes us to the main outflow screen once again. You'll notice that in total, the system has indicated that we have sent 270.15 tons. As mentioned previously, we have a composting facility on site called Cap City Composting, and some of the disaster debris sent by the transfer processor was brought in for composting. The on-site composting facility generated processing residuals which were accounted for on the inflows tab, the 1,000 tons. This, of course, is a hypothetical example. We will now indicate the end users to whom the finished compost was sent. On the end use table, click Add End Use Outflow. Report end use in tons by material type sent by end user category and region. So we do not need to provide contact information for individual customers. In this instance, our composting facility sold 1,250 tons of finished compost to customers who picked up the material from the landfill, which is located in Sacramento County. So under end user category, select material consumers in Sacramento County. Under material type, type compost and click organics compost compost and type 1250 tons sent then click save or press enter. You can verify that the record was successfully entered on the subsequent screen. We do not have any more material types to add for this flow, so we can click the back button to return to the main outflows page. Our landfill also sold compost to one or more bagging operations in San Joaquin County. Click Add and Use Outflow once again. 
Under End User Category, select Manufacturing and Packaging. Under End User County, select San Joaquin. Under Material Type, select Organics, Compost, Compost. Under Ton Cent, enter the value 2,856 and click save or press the enter key. This completes landfill outflows. We will now move on to the next tab, disposal origins. Please note once again that in order for this tab to work properly, the inflow tab must be completed. Specifically, the disposal facility must have reported accepting direct hauled solid waste for disposal in order for the table to function. On this tab, we will provide the jurisdiction of origin for direct hauled solid waste received for disposal by your facility. Begin by clicking Edit and inputting the method or methods used to determine jurisdiction of origin for the direct hauled solid waste. We'll select Ask jurisdiction of origin at the gate at the time of delivery for each hauler slash person bringing materials and use periodic reports from reporting entities delivering materials and click save or press the enter key. The page will refresh to reflect the check boxes you have selected. You will see a table called direct haul disposal origins accepted. And you'll recall we accepted 6,000 tons of direct hauled MSW, which included the 1,000 tons of processing residuals. You can verify that by looking at the figure labeled Total Direct Hauled Tons Accepted and Disposed. We'll begin by adding the 1,000 tons of processing residuals by clicking Add Host Assigned Waste. You'll notice that your host jurisdiction is pre-populated. Enter 1,000 tons in the Tons Accepted cell and click Save. Since we added host assigned waste, we'll need to provide additional information about that. Click the Edit in the box that appears below that table. Then enter 1,000 tons in the box, tons assigned due to no origin information, and zero in the other boxes, and press save. Now we will add the rest of the jurisdictions of origin for the MSW. Click Add Jurisdiction to add another line item. To enter waste from Sacramento Unincorporated, click and begin typing Sacra and click on it when it appears. Then enter 4,000 tons and click Save. Then we'll add another 1,000 tons from Butte County Regional Waste Management Authority and click Save. Confirm we have allocated all 6,000 tons of direct hauled solid waste. And now we can move on to green material origins. This tab is essentially the same as the previous one. Begin by entering the method or methods used to determine jurisdiction of origin for the direct haul green material. Then click Save. In the below table, we'll enter the jurisdiction of origin. Click Add Jurisdiction, type all jurisdictions from which the green material beneficial reuse was received via direct haul. In this example, we will sign all tons to Sacramento Unincorporated, 
and click Save. Confirm that the tons accepted total matches the total direct haul green material beneficial reuse tons accepted and that the methodology questions have been answered. Then you can move on to source sector. On this tab, you will need to allocate the source sector to your uh, total ton sent to disposal from direct haul. Before we allocate, we will need to declare the method used to determine source sector. Click Edit, select the methodology used. For this example, we will assign a source sector based on billing records. Click Save. You can enter the source sector allocations as tons or percent. The total for all source sectors must equal 100%. For illustrative purposes, we will enter sector allocations uh, as follows. 60, or 600, 400. Clicking save, of course, after entering each sector allocation. Now, if you were specifically asked or instructed to upload documents to Cal Recycle, you would proceed to the Documents tab. If not, do not upload anything into the Documents tab. We were not asked or requested to upload any documents, so we will move on to the Review and Submit tab. This is the Review and Submit tab. Here you will find a summary of data you provided in the quarterly report. Notice the table label flags. Once you request the RDRS system to review the quarterly report, any issues with the data you entered would be shown there. We're all ready to have the system review our data. Click review. A prompt will come up. Click review on the prompt. The review process is complete, checking to see if we have any flags. First of all, there are three types of flags that may be generated during a review. Correction required, verification needed, and informational. If a correction required flag is generated, you will not be able to submit the report until the issue is corrected. A verification needed flag indicates that some of your inputs may look irregular but could still be correct. You must double check your inputs and either make a correction or verify it is indeed correct before you can submit the report. You should read the informational flags, but they will not stop you from submitting your report. Clicking on the highlighted link in the source column will take you to the tab that needs attention. The verification flag has been generated asking us to confirm on inflows. Click verify to acknowledge this was the case. The issues have been addressed. The flag has been closed. There are no more flags to attend to. You can see the submit button has appeared. We can now submit our report and click submit. A prompt 
will ask you to confirm the data is true and correct. To the best of your knowledge, click the submit button one more time. Congratulations, you have submitted the report. And this concludes the process of submitting a quarterly report for the disposal facility. You can revise your data by clicking the revise report button. Each revision will be logged by the system. Thank you for viewing this instructional video for Cal Recycles Recycling and Disposal Reporting System. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for how to improve the system or the training materials, please send an email to rdrs at calrecycle.ca.gov.